Naswold Peak sits along the border of Assiniboine Provincial Park in British Columbia and Banff National Park in Alberta. It is located southeast of Fatigue Mountain and well to the north of what is generally considered the core Assiniboine area around Lake Magog and Mount Assiniboine. Wietza and I started this trip from the Sunshine Ski Hill parking lot, biking up the approach road before continuing on foot. We hiked across the expanse of Sunshine Meadows past Howard Douglas Lake to Citadel Pass. From the pass, we descended into the Simpson River Valley before continuing along the Great Divide Trail through Golden Valley. From Golden Valley, we snuck between tree line and cliffs along Golden Mountain's south face before ascending broad scree slopes to the Naswold's upper southeast ridge. Some tricky scrambling led to the summit. We descended our ascent line before joining back to the GDT and completing our hike to Og Lake where we set up camp in preparation for our Cotley Traverse the next day. Wietza and I decided to bike the first part of our approach since the Sunshine Meadows gondola stopped running already on the 11th. Bikes are permitted on the Sunshine Village Road but aren't allowed in the village or above in the meadows. At least three or four trucks passed us in the first few kilometers and by the time we finally got within sight of the village at least a dozen vehicles left us in their dust. It should be noted that we had to push our bikes at least half the distance. That road is bloody steep. And since bikes aren't allowed in the village we figured we'd best locked into trees along the road just before we got there. The last few trips have been great. I've had dry feet almost the whole time. Not same until like the end of the Yeah. I knew what to expect from the first part of the day, but Wietza had no idea other than seeing the Gaia stats. I knew we'd be gaining and losing a ton of height before ever setting foot near Naswell Peak. The first order of the day was ascending to a shoulder of Quartz Hill before losing more than a few meters to Howard Douglas Lake. After testing my Z-Pax tent and pack the two days previous on the Jutland to Sage Mountain Traverse, I was now ready for a more hardy test. My pack was still light at around 15 pounds and it felt very comfortable. That's a new sign there. Yep. <laughs> Honestly, I can never get over the fact that so many folks take a heli ride into the Assiniboine area, missing out on the incredible landscapes beneath. It's not just the scenery, it's the slow soaking in of nature as you spend a day approaching on your own two feet, instead of that 10 minute flight and a much heavier carbon footprint I might add. Probably. From Citadel Pass, the descent into the upper Simpson River Valley and towards Golden Valley and the Valley of the Rocks is always a bit depressing. It's not only the height losses, but also dropping out of the brilliant fall colors. Thankfully, this downer doesn't last long. Oh, nice. Like from them? From Tarpon, yeah. yeah. I like how uh, they put distances on there. The kilometer isn't bad, it's down of course. It's down, yeah.
to love this trail? Well, if you fetch the down part. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I, know, I know what's ahead, so it's not stressing me out. <laughs> yeah, and these aren't even larches. We continued to lose height down to the valley of the rocks and before long we were back in light forest hiking the undulating trail towards our planned access route to Naswald's south face. Keeps the critters out at least. We left the majority of our overnight gear just off the trail and started wandering moderate bush to the break along Golden's lower south cliffs. Within only about 15 minutes we were already through the bush and ascending a perfect bush free line. Even better, it was nicely in the shade, delightful with the sun now at its harshest. A goat highway from the cliffs to a giant rubble bowl under Naswold's south face was just another bonus and an already pretty darn good day. Right and then up. I wouldn't be complaining if there's a little waterfall there I could dunk my head under. But okay, fine. Now it's windy from the packs. Really? <laughs> well, the What a day. What a yeah, shitty day. That's what I'm going for. Mainly because I don't like any of the roots to the other one. <laughs> Thank you. 
As I finally crested the ridge with stunning views back over the core Cinnaboyne area, I had to gulp a few extra times. The ridge ahead looked very, very exposed and very, very loose. I started slowly along it, yelling back to Wheatsa to watch a short section of loose ridge top that overhung the north face. Many of the rocks along the ridge couldn't even be touched, never mind held. One step in particular was horribly exposed and required us to weight a rock that was simply wedged, not even held into the mountain. Not the easiest or the safest terrain I've been on this year. Careful what you step on here. It's overhanging the face. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's solid, but it doesn't look like it. I'd rather fall left than right, put it that way. I mean, look at this guy. You can see right through him.
Well, at least it's solid. At least it's solid. <laughs> oh, I know. Meadows? Yeah, yeah, so that's the one we took. There's yeah. a shelter for these meadows? Well, that's the cabin. Oh. Yeah. The next few hours to Og Lake via the Valley of the Rocks Trail were longer and more tiring than expected, but also extremely scenic and pleasing to the soul. I live for days like this with endless kilometers ahead of me, brilliant fall colors, and a deep blue sky overhead. How many people fit in the cabin? 
Well, we were in there with five of us, so I'd say five or six, max. I mean, you could probably put someone on the floor. Yeah, it probably only was a few hours ago we were up there. Yeah, just over two. Oh, wow. I do think I... I... <laughs> That's all good. We spent the evening at an empty Og Lake campground hydrating and preparing for another long day of perfect fall hiking and scrambling on the Cotley Traverse.